lie detector test. This is what you niggas been waiting on. <laughs> favorite auntie mo and i am back for a very late review of marriage boot camp y'all this is love the way you lie that's the way it is yeah love the way you lie before we can do this review as always church announcements please make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure your notifications are turned on let me know that you stopped by have y'all missed me i missed y'all did y'all miss me for real Nigga, stop lying. You always be seeing this shit and I don't even be believing when you be saying, nigga, stop lying. You, you miss me for real, for real. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, you lying. You ain't miss me. Okay. Anyways, y'all, look here. I hope everybody is safe out there. Y'all are washing y'all hands. Y'all are drinking y'all water. Y'all are drinking y'all liquor to cure anything from the inside out. And y'all to stand free and clear of this here ooh wee. You know what I'm saying? That's out there, y'all. My week has been very long. My week has been very long, okay? As you all know, I do the drive through testing in hot weather, in PPE all day, which is why I cannot wear this, this beautiful, beautiful bundles that I have in my hair. I can't really wear them down right now because the shit looks wild. I look like I'm about to go rolling on the river right now. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to give y'all the look of Tina Turner right now. The shit is just up. Because it's, it's, it's just a lot going on with it. With, with the weather and all of that. Y'all don't give a damn about that. Y'all want to know about this review. So, um, look here. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review. Because I'm ready to give it to you. Hopefully, y'all got y'all Moscato. Because I missed y'all. So, I'm ready to give y'all a good review. So, let's get right on up into it. Y'all, before I get into it one more time, look, I want to let y'all know this shirt was made by my boo, Tiffany. I will put her information down in the description box below. Also, y'all like this little chapstick I got on? It's cute or whatever by Chocolate Girl. I got mine in the mail, what was it, yesterday? It's cute all on my lip and all of that. I will leave her information down in the description box below. Listen, let me tell y'all, because I wear PPE all day, I'm wearing a mask and a face shield. And so, you know, you don't necessarily want to wear no lipstick on your lips that's going to get all inside the face shield. So I wore this lip gloss all day today. When I tell you, it was cute. Everybody was complimenting me and I like it because it don't make my lips look ashy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. She cute, you know what I'm saying? I'm a chocolate girl. <laughs> Are you? I will leave her information down in the description box below. Y'all, so let's get into this review. Okay. It's the day of the lie detector test. Everybody nervous as hell. They waking up like, oh shit. Bitch, what is you gonna ask me? No, nigga, what is you gonna ask me? Ask me first and, and I'ma let you know. Okay, so fuck crazy. Everybody nervous as shit, right? Child Ballistic and Jocelyn in the bathroom arguing. This nigga Ballistic is pissed off at Jocelyn because he feels like she does stuff to entice Stu. Therefore, that's making Stu look at her. So he's pissed off at Jocelyn. Look here, I used to have an ex like that. Would be mad at me because his homeboys would look at me. I can't help but that I look this good. <laughs> nigga, you chose me, obviously. And it's not my damn fault if your boys is looking at me. I mean... <laughs> God delivered it. I signed for it. What you want me to know? You know what I'm saying? But he's mad at Jocelyn because he feels like Stu is looking at her. Now, Ballistic, he fine as hell. But that shows you your own goddamn insecurities right there. How you going to be mad at her for what you feel like another nigga is doing? I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. So look here, Dr. Ish and Judge Tolan get the whole group together and let them know, like, look here, it's the day of the lie detector test, the moment y'all have been waiting on. So I want y'all to get whatever questions that y'all have together and, you know, we get ready to kick this thing off, whatever, right? Child, this goddamn Johnson says, I decide she wants to reveal to the group that she wants to, like, get the elephant out of the room, whatever. She reveals to the group that her and Ballistic were upstairs, upstairs arguing over Stu and the fact that he's been looking at Jocelyn. Now, um, what's the name? Ballistic 
gives Jocelyn this look like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's looking at her like she crazy, like, what the hell are you talking about? I never said that. Mind you, we just heard y'all niggas, even though y'all tried to unmike yourself, we heard the whole damn argument and shit that y'all have. Not them niggas that that's them, but us, the audience. So, nigga, we know what the hell just goddamn went on, right? So, child, at this point, Ballista gets pissed off. He gets up and he leaves. I think he feels more embarrassed than anything that Jocelyn would bring up something that they argued about that was personal and private to them. She brought it out to the group, and I think that embarrassed him. That then made Stu get pissed off. Child, Stu gets up. He starts bitching at me. Chalet and was like, see, you the one that started this whole thing. You the one that planted that in his head in the first goddamn place. Man, that's messed up. Child, when then Stu gets pissed off, he gets up and leaves. Girl, Dr. Ish had to go to Ballistic's room and calm this nigga down. Ballistic walked in the room and a little old lie detector test in there. Oh, we ready to take the test right now? He like, man, fuck this, fuck you, fuck that test, fuck everybody. He mad as hell. Dr. Ish like, look here. I know you mad, but um, we need to go on downstairs and finish this little old thing. You know, I, I don't know what the hell is going on with y'all. It was real weird anyway, like ballistic. Even if Stu is looking at your female, you go check Stu. Why you gonna be mad at Jocelyn for it? That ain't her damn fault. Like I said, I had an ex like that. That shit just took me back for a minute. I was like, this nigga is damn stupid. Child, Dr. Ish does end up talking ballistic into coming back downstairs. But him and Jocelyn is still sitting up there kind of bickering and like arguing the whole time. When it came time for them to ask the questions that they wanted to ask, child, they were so damn pissed off. They didn't even want to ask the damn questions. Now, Jocelyn's question to Ballistic was, do you plan to leave her if there is no proposal or no wedding by May 1st? Because No, I think no proposal because, you know, she wants to get married. She gave this nigga like eight, nine months or something like that. So I'm guessing by May 1st will be the end of that time. So she wants to know, are you really going to leave by then um her question to him is are you really going to marry me period so ballistics question to jocelyn i had that confused ballistics question to jocelyn was are you going to leave my may first if i don't propose to your ass jocelyn's question to ballistics nigga is you gonna marry me in the first goddamn place um Michelle's question was, were you in love with me when you first, I think he said, Stu said something about he fell in love with Michelle within the first couple of months of them being together. Michelle's question to Stu is, did you really fall in love with me the first few months of us being together? Stu's question to Michelle, uh, Michelle is simply, bitch, do you love me? Bitch, are you riding? Say so you never ever leave from beside me because the bitch don't act like she really into his ass right now. We all goddamn know that. Um, CeeLo's question to Shawnee were, are you committed to me out of convenience? Meaning we done been together this long any goddamn way. Why buy the camera where you can get the goddamn mint for free and bitch, just keep it a cheaper to keep it. So are you with me because the nigga paying bills in this bitch? Or like what the hell is really going on? Shawnee's question to CeeLo is, nigga, are you ever going to marry me? Do you want to marry me, nigga? They've been together, what, engaged for seven years? Together eight years? Something like that? Too goddamn long. CeeLo, make up your mind, old school. What you gonna do, my nigga? I'm just saying, Aja was questioned to Styles P, which I was like, oh, we, did you have feelings for the woman that you had an affair with? Now, like Styles P said, that could go either way. Y'all, excuse me. That's my fan. Y'all not ready. No, Scott, don't make your auntie. <laughs> now, Styles P said he had the feeling of lust. So, it's going to be a hard question for him to answer because he don't want to seem like he lied, but he did have the feeling of lust. But he said he wasn't in love with the bitch. You know what I'm saying? Styles wants to ask Ajwa if she blames him for the death of their daughter. Now, I'm thinking maybe Styles was a little bit homophobic and they met, that may have played a role in their daughter's, I don't know, coming out or somehow the way she was living, some kind of way. I have a, a feeling I could be wrong. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that has a um, strong reason to do with maybe a lot of um disconnect or whatever that was going on in that household and um 
Last but not least, Bianca wants to ask Choses, are you emotionally involved with somebody else? I'm guessing the holder he got on the side that was all up in the goddamn IG and Twitter with his goddamn necklace on. That's who he really want. You know what I'm saying? Choses' his question to Bianca was, were you pregnant by another man within the year or whatever that they were apart? Now, she claims that she's good. She got that shit in the bag. She ain't did nothing wrong. But at the same time, she says she's naivest as hell. She naivest. She want shit. She don't feel right. She got them bubble guts. Something ain't selling right on her stomach. Why, Bianca? Why? Now, half of the couples go to do their lie detector test. The other half of the uh, couples are down there sitting, chopping it up, right? Dr. Ish is talking with Johnson one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get her to, like, calm down, understand, like, look here, y'all niggas need to work together. Whatever the hell is going on, y'all need to work through this shit and talk it out, right? Child Styles P, Stu, and CeeLo, and who else was it? It was somebody, no, it was Styles P, I don't know. It was Styles P and somebody else. Anyway, they were in the backyard talking with Stu. And Stu was like, I don't know where this came from. This came completely out of left field. I don't know where this is going, right? Now, they tell him, look here, nigga. It could have happened the first night that we was here. This nigga Stu was drinking. He makes a comment about um something like Jocelyn or him having a threesome, her coming up missing, some shit like that. That combined, I'm sure, with what Misha Lay said, had set that bomb off in Ballistic's head. And now Stu was like, oh, damn, I didn't mean it that way. Or I didn't mean for this shit to come out because the nigga was drinking. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. And y'all know the nigga can't handle his goddamn liquor. So he came out his goddamn neck and said something sideways that was very fucking disrespectful. Now he feels bad for the shit, right? Child, after Dr. Ish goes and hollers at Jocelyn, Jocelyn catches Stu in the goddamn kitchen, get ready to go into the confessional. She low-key punked this nigga. She was like, look here, nigga. You need to go tell this motherfucker you apologize for your goddamn wandering eyes because this nigga's mad at me. I ain't got nothing to do with that because I look this goddamn good. Bitches want to be me. They want to see me. They want to feel me. They want to goddamn taste me. You need to go let this nigga know I ain't got nothing to do with your goddamn eyes looking at me. That's all you and your fucked up eyes. And you need to do that shit. You need to do that goddamn shit now. Child Stu was looking like, okay, goddamn. I, I mean, uh... Can I go pee? Like, he looks scared as hell of Jocelyn. Child, then afterwards, Jocelyn ends up catching Michelle Lay in the kitchen. She starts coming sideways at Michelle Lay, talking about you, why you didn't sit up there and you didn't say nothing. You ain't got nothing to say about this whole goddamn time. It's like Jocelyn is looking for somebody else to be mad at and go off on because Ballistic went off on her. She tell, Michelle Lay tells um, Jocelyn, look here, I'm not worried about nothing. I know you don't want to, so it's all good. Child, Johnson ass say, you know I don't want to. He ain't good enough for you, so he damn sure ain't good enough for me. Like, jo that's where Johnson, like, she was starting to become somebody that was likable, but then she started, you know, she pulls it back to that same old Jocelyn. Like, bitch, that's insulting. I'm sorry. Even if my nigga wasn't shit, bitch, you're not going to talk about my ain't shit nigga like that. He's mine. God damn it. You talk about your own ain't shit nigga like that. Not mine, goddammit. Misha Lay wanted to say something to her. She wanted to snap on her ass, but she didn't. She played it good. You know, I, I was proud of her. Child afterwards, um, Stu ends up catching ballistic. He apologizes to Ballistic like, hey, my nigga, look here. I don't want no problems. I don't want no drama. I ain't got no time for it. I don't need you and all your muscles knocking me the fuck out. I don't want it. So, child, they end up hugging it, hugging it out. Ballistic says, "Ain't no beef between them. That it's it's um it's Jocelyn that she was out of line. She shouldn't have came at him out of line. That's what pissed him off." And they they end up hugging it out. I was like, "Good," because I was kind of scared for Stu for a minute. Like he gonna end up catching this nigga, um, and and bopping his ass in the back of the goddamn head or some shit like that, right? Um, Dr. Ish and the Judge Toller ends up getting the whole group together and it's like, look here, I know y'all niggas is ready for these results, right? <laughs> and I'm ready to give it to these motherfuckers tomorrow. She tells them, FYI, just to let you niggas know, when I give y'all these results tomorrow, I just want y'all to marinate on something tonight. Four of you niggas was lying. Four of you niggas was lying. So, uh, 
I'm going to let y'all marinate on that. But look here. One more thing I want to let y'all know. They tell them that they finna have a little night out on the town. A boys night and a girls night out. After you done told these niggas that four of you niggas done lied on your lie detector test. But we finna go out to the club and have a good ass goddamn time. What? Try everybody goes up to their room getting ready to go out to the club. Next thing you know, you hear goddamn Jocelyn up in that bathroom yelling like a wild ass motherfucking banshee. She is going off screaming to the top of her goddamn lungs. Um... Her and Ballistic is in the goddamn bathroom arguing. She really yelling at him. You don't hear him say, saying nothing. You just hear this bitch like literally screaming like she being goddamn murdered to the top of her goddamn lungs. Child, the goddamn production has to kick the door in because the bitch don't want to answer the door. Production has to kick the door in with goddamn security. She's just like, I'm talking to him. We just have a simple conversation. They like, look at bitch. I just make sure that you weren't dying and you weren't trying to kill no goddamn body because bitch, the shit sounded crazy. Child, when I tell you they came out in true couple form, walked out like ain't shit happened. Like you niggas just wasn't back there <laughs> probably having a goddamn WWE match and y'all gonna walk out like that. I mean, okay. You like it. I love it. You want some more of it, nigga. It is what it is. When they get downstairs in the kitchen, Johnson once again starts coming at Michelle. They talking about you sitting there looking stupid. You acting like you don't know what the hell going on. How come you ain't say nothing? How come you didn't step in? How come your man didn't stick up for you? Or how come you didn't stick up for your man? Coming real sideways at Michelle. They gonna tell Michelle, why you looking at me like this, sis? Child, Michelle better than your auntie. I'd have gave that whole five on the black hand side. I'm telling you, bitch, don't play with me. I, all, all of this, cause I, I don't like arguing. That's not me. I'm, I'm. That's just not me. I feel like if you that goddamn heated up, you gotta get some off your chest, nigga. Let's get some off your goddamn chest. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. That's just how I roll. Michelle is just like, no. I'm fine. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. No, girl, you better than me. Shawnee got up, girl. Shawnee was like, all right, y'all, let's go out. <laughs> Shit got off with the motherfucker. <laughs> Child, they end up getting to the club. The boys is having a good ass goddamn time. The females is ready to go. They look tired. They look through. They look goddamn over it. CeeLo and Charles was a little bit too comfortable with the little bobblehead females that they had over there in the VIP section. I mean, too goddamn comfortable. Like, CeeLo asking homegirl, do you got a man at home? Why? Why you need to know that, CeeLo? Because you got a woman at home. I'm just saying, Bianca's complaining the whole goddamn time. Ajua looks over it. Um, Jocelyn is high. Ain't nobody feeling nothing, y'all. Everybody was just, they was tired. They was, they was done. Child, this goddamn fool, Stu, got so drunk in the club, he started freestyling. That's how you know. Y'all already know. Y'all done see my Friday night sip and chill. I just be a little bit tipsy and I start freestyling. This nigga was drizzunk. In the goddamn corner, end up going to his own private section of the club and talking to his own damn self. I said, Stu, if you gonna party, you know you wanna be safe. You sit in that corner, you talk to your goddamn self, cause can't nobody tell you nothing like you. I'm just trying to. I'm. Uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> when you're drunk, can't nobody tell you nothing like you can tell you nothing. I'm just goddamn saying. Child, look here. On the way home, the females is in the car, and once again. It's brought up again about this whole situation with Stu. And I think Johnson brings it up. Michelle is like, you know what? It's done. It's done. It's a wrap. She claims it's a wrap for him. I don't know, y'all. I don't think Michelle and Stu going to end up staying together. I just don't see them being together. Because their whole relationship, I don't know. It's just weird to me. I do see that Stu, you know, he did come into this with real, true, genuine feelings. Because at first, I thought the whole situation with them was fake as hell. But I do see that Stu does have true, genuine feelings. But him and Michelle, they don't need to be together. They just a trip, y'all. They, they they just trip. Look here, y'all. That was the end of the goddamn episode right there. The new one comes on tomorrow. I will have that review for you. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump. Mm.